Okay. Um, hi. Okay, we have half the class, less than half the class here. Um, but let's get started. So today we're here to talk about uh, careers. So um, let's talk. What 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 do jobs look like? What do you guys expect? Um, what do you guys have in mind when you enter the world of work? What are you expecting uh, to happen? What are you expecting there to be? You can raise your hand if you want. You can unmute. I'd love to hear what's the what are we thinking the world of work looks like. Just try. Somebody. Yeah, Hazaria. Yeah. Um. Hi. Um. Hi. So I'm thinking it's gonna be. Uh, well, it depends on the type of job that you're gonna get. Definitely. Um, but it's probably going to be one where um, you're not going to be uh, you're not going to be the owner of most of your time because um, you're get, you're going to get paid um, to do the work and uh, a place where there are going to be a lot of expectations and um, if you don't perform uh, something that uh, something that's not going to let you grow to grow professionally or to the next level. Sorry, why, why wouldn't you be able to grow professionally? Or if you don't perform, you won't be able to grow? Um, like if, um, not if, you, like, um, there, there, are, there are a couple of jobs where um, it's normal to actually be lazy. Um, like, uh, so, and also like types of jobs where that, that aren't going to allow you to learn new things, um, only allow you to actually do redundant things. Um, and so, like, I, I also read, like, one of the biggest reasons that developers change roles really often was um, because they weren't learning anything anywhere, and they were doing the same thing over and over again. Um, so I think if that's the case on a job, um, it does get boring, and it doesn't allow you to see new things. Sounds pretty negative. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I, I, did, I didn't mean to be negative. Um. No, I'm just, but it's interesting, right? I'm just taking notes. So I hear that you don't have any time. You, they might fire you, and it's going to be boring, possibly. What are some positive things? Um, OK, from my side? Yeah. Um, OK, yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, financial, uh, financially, if, if it pays well, it's one positive thing um also if it's uh, if it's a really good place if it's a really good place of growth um you're going to learn a lot um you're going to get to network and connect with a lot of people um a lot of people that are going to help uh, later down the line um and also like the mind needs something to do um if someone was just given money and um could do whatever they want i, I don't think uh, the brain could actually sustain that for a long period of time. OK. I'm actually going to just share this document with uh, with everyone. So everyone, if anyone wants to, they can just add notes while we're talking. Um, just... Who else wants to go? Okay. Uh, Here's the link. So anyone who wants to can just work on this document. But go ahead, Jerusalem. Okay. Uh, what I want to say is first we have to know uh, the company's culture. Uh, knowing the company's culture is uh, somewhat uncertain. Going through it is what is needed. And the other thing is you at least have to show some progress each day or in just. Uh, uh, in the week, at least weekly, showing uh, some progress is somewhat necessary. That's what I thought. Well, I think. Uh, yeah, you can go. I, so, and the point is, I'm trying to get a sense of what what is our view as a as a class or as a cohort of uh, careers. So, go ahead, Jakinda. 
Yeah, so I also think that uh, in the work environment, you're going to have somebody that you'll be answering to, and uh, it will be important to, because uh, they might expect us to, to work in a way that they want the work done. So it should be uh, also okay to and kind of understand how he wants or she wants the work done and uh, try and develop a, a relationship that you can ask questions and get answers from when you're stuck from them. Yeah. Uh, Barakat and then from Bani. Yeah, uh, one of my thoughts about going like working remote or something is like being able to communicate uh, what uh, you, you are, we are able to do, like to what extent we are able to do, and understanding their needs, like uh, like to what extent that we can achieve their goals is something that we can communicate and being able to communicate that thing is one thing and the other thing is like uh, knowing how the company really works like I think in the first weeks or some some time knowing each individual uh, like their parts like their standards and how they are doing it and trying to learn uh, more efficiently will be one of the things that we need to do I think okay thanks from Bani uh, I think uh, being able to deliver the task that you have been given and if it's possible trying to exceed the expectations and as well as understanding like how the company works so the company culture that's it for me I want to ask a slightly different question. Um, why do you guys want to work? Why do you guys want jobs? Uh, can I go? Uh, Fumbani put his hand up first. So for the Malawi before Kenya, please. <laughs> but I think for me, like the first thing I think would be like the, the financial security that comes with the job and also improving my skills and being able like being able to use my skills to do something which can have an impact in the i guess in the world thanks Trikenda. uh there's the financial the financial uh, parts and there is also the, okay it's not security as such but you get to earn some money, some money that you can use. You get to earn some money that you can use in your day-to-day -day lives. And also, it's a stepping stone to your ultimate career goal. So you have to work to gain the skills to take you where you want to go. So, yeah. And where, where do you want to go? Uh, personally, I want to, to become a machine learning engineer for a sports company. Maybe uh, a basketball team or a Formula One. Uh, constructors team so by getting a job uh, it means that I'll increase my my experience in the different areas and also ultimately maybe continue and reach and reach and reach somewhere yeah okay who else okay uh, I also think it's uh, it's a way that we can understand the the industry like, um, well, unless you get a job and uh, get to uh, actually uh, develop these skills and uh, uh, work on real projects, you won't be able to understand the industry. So that's uh, something I presume. Yeah. Who else wants to go? Yes. Okay, thank you. Like. When I think some of the reasons are like maybe the the financial thing is one. The other thing is like you get to work on like a real world problem that hasn't been solved yet. So that would be a bit interesting. And also you'll be gaining more skills. Right? Okay, let's just put their hand up. Uh, Milky again. Yeah, we we can also get, understand the flows within the industry and uh, get an idea, uh, constructive ideas on new, uh, 
on new on new ideas to solve that problem those ideas can develop into a company or a startup Uh, uh, okay. Uh, who put their hand up? Anyone else who hasn't gone recently? So from we'll take from Bani, and then if there's anyone else who hasn't gone, go ahead. I'm not sure if this has already been said, but I think also being able to like work with people from different backgrounds so you can have to network and then those connections can be useful in the future, I think. Uh, backgrounds, this could be... Michael Teglin? Uh, yes. Okay, I think like uh, most of the things have been said, but uh, adding to that, I think uh, life might be boring uh, if you're not working, especially like if you're not learning anything. Um, I think it's going to be boring in general. Okay, so we don't want to just sit around and drink coffee all day or hang out at the bar. Yeah. <laughs> Have we heard from any ladies? I'd like to hear some ideas. Uh, Deborah? Yeah, okay, hi guys. For me, when I think of jobs, uh, I think of just applying the things we have learned thus far and try, it would put you in an environment where you get to use those, those skills and those things you have learned uh, on real problems. Anyone else? Beza Wittlam and then Steshi. Um, from my side, when I think about a uh, job, the first thing I, uh, I think is that uh, there's like different type of a job, a job that you will develop your skills and your talents and also learn every day. And there's a job like someone said that that makes you lazy. And I want to be in a field of uh, a job that makes you upgrade and uh, be proud of yourself every day by doing something you learned and uh, like also the connection thing that they said that will also lead you to a good uh, future that you you think of like the startups or even have your own company something like that yeah um we have uh stella uh, okay, I, I want to work because of all those reasons and also especially because I don't like being idle. But uh, also if uh, if I can make someone else's life easy by what I do, that, that would be really great. So if I can make a data scientist's life somewhat easy, that, that would be really great. Great. Okay. Not now? Okay, so uh, personally when I think of job, the first thing I think is about the financial freedom. Uh, so I hope I get uh, some kind of uh, financial freedom. The second one is I hope uh, and I would love to get is like a support from the company or senior developers on improving my skills and uh, yeah, that's what I expect and deliver uh, good products after that. Okay, thank you, Christian. Yes, uh, personally, what you think, what I think about job is that job is just an environment that you, you apply what you learn. But uh, before you need a good collaboration, a, a good communication skills, and uh, also I think you have to be also respectful. It's very important. And why do I need job? I think I need job because, as Natalia said. Uh, we have to be financial. We need the financial freedom, and uh, uh, also it's also important to, to have, I think, to make friends and uh, to. I think, I think that's all for me. Okay. Thanks, uh, Erislam. 
Okay, I do agree with all they've been saying, especially Stacey's idea. And also, it helps us, it helps us uh, build a community. So, I just want to add that, building community. Anyone else want to go? Otherwise, I would just summarize what we've heard. So what do we have? Um, so money is definitely part of it. Impact in the world, I think, is a common theme that we've seen. Um, money again, and then a stepping stone to something else. And so I think that there is the money side. There is the impact side. There is the um, learning side. So we want to make progress in whatever that we do. And the learning also relates to uh, understanding the industry better. Um, this is an impact one, I think. This is a learning one. This is a learning one. This is a learning one. This is a social one. And I think that these two are somehow related, that meeting other people and you don't want to just sit at home the whole day <clears throat> and do nothing. So what, if, what are we seeing? So, so money is a trend. Learning is a trend. Uh, impact. It's a trend. We see that community slash passing time is a trend. Um, are there any others that we have missed? So money, learning, impact, and community and passing time. Are there any that we have missed if we if we try and summarize them? No? Yes? Let's take, let's take just 10 seconds and think about it. Have we missed anything? <laughs> is respect or admiration from our peers, is that something as well? Do we want to kind of say, wow, look, look. Part of the community, I guess, the admiration and everything. It could be. I mean, community from my side is a little bit, you get, make friends and you have people to socialize with, but Maybe I'm sure... Maybe self-discipline? Self-discipline? Okay. Yeah. Jermaine? How about, like, being confident of, like, being a part of something, having that confidence? I want to add, uh, so I'm going to add the respective peers because I, I assume, I mean, maybe to show me a, you can just put your hands up. If any of you got a job tomorrow at uh, Facebook, how many of your, you would be, or your parents would be proud to say, look, my kid just got a job at Facebook and that would be something that, yeah. And so I think that that's, that's also an important, wow, there's a lot of hands going up. So now they're going back down. So I think that that respect is, if we consider all of those, I feel like we've probably covered um, most of the important points. So I don't know if Toyin and Christian, if you want to say something. No, no, sorry. sorry. Okay. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about today, so if, if we say that this is a little bit what uh, trainees are looking for, um, we're looking to earn money because all of us need to live and we need to pay rent and buy food and do other things. We want to keep learning. We want to have impact in the world around us. We want to, uh, I'm going to write here, be part of a community and to have a way to pass our time. And we want to earn the respect of our peers and in our community. And that maybe some of these may be more or less important to each of you, depending on your situation. But I think that all of us have, to a certain extent, some of these. Um, so I'm going to stop presenting. I'm going to start presenting this tab, um, the careers tab. And so I'm, I'm a little bit behind where I wanted to be in terms of preparing um, this presentation. But <clears throat> I wanted to, I hope this is visible. Christian, do you want to say something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I want to know more about the part of learning. What I was supposed to learn when we applied the job. You're asking about learning when you apply for a job? Yeah, yeah, yes. Is that what I was supposed to learn? Yeah. So when you apply for a job or when you're in a job? 
oh, sorry. When when I already get the job, yeah. and sorry. I'm working, yet, what are we supposed to learn during those process? Uh, <laughs> do somebody want no, to answer? I think you can, you can talk about your experience. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. No, I mean, I, I think it's an interesting question. <clears throat> I I didn't I didn't think it would would be a question. I thought it was obvious. But let's answer the question. Sometimes the best questions are those ones that may seem a little bit obvious. So who wants? I'd like somebody to answer this question. Jakinda. I think uh, what we are going to learn when you're already in the job will be from uh, our superiors, maybe, because uh, as as we all know, or as it is right now, we are only like uh, with three months of training, and uh, we might not know every other thing. So for you to become a guru at that one thing that you want, you have to, to become a student of someone who's already that guru. So I think that... Uh, learning we are definitely going to learn from our superiors and also we are going to increase our knowledge from the community around us so it's definitely a learning process and i don't think that it ever stops so yeah so if you don't learn i just think you're just going to be you are as good as just to sleep and uh, pass time yeah maybe so <clears throat> christian we'll talk about that in a moment um so I'm just gonna I'm gonna walk through some of the content that we have, um, and what I would like is that just uh, you can put your hand up and ask a question. You can save your questions. You can put them in the chat box. I'm here at the Ten Academy Philosophy of Jobs. Um, so what is what are what are we trying to do here? Um, the reason that we've been doing everything that we've been doing um, is a little bit like this Karate Kid, the first original Karate Kid from the '80s. None of you were born in the 80s, so I'm not going to ask if you saw it when it came out. But how many of you have seen the original Karate Kid? Put your hands up if you've seen the original Karate Kid. The movie... Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for rescuing me and make, making sure I don't feel too super old. Milky, two people. Okay, so same. So I know everyone else is Michael. Everyone else is going to go and watch this movie because what does the Karate Kid have to do with getting a job? Um, so in the Karate Kid movie, <clears throat> what this person, what the trainer did, the sensei, said he wanted uh, the young guy comes and says, look, I'm getting beat up at school, and I want to learn how to do karate. And so the sensei goes and teaches this guy to do all sorts of funny things, how to wax the car, how to paint a fence, how to sand the floor, how to paint the floor, using all of these funny techniques. But by the end of it, uh, somehow, after doing super hard work, he realizes that he's fully ready um, to fight his uh, rival when it comes to jobs, or when it comes to karate, not to jobs. And so over the last two and a half months, and probably during the training process, or during the selection process as well, that's what we've been trying to do. We've been trying to get you ready. Um, any highly motivated young person, and all of you here uh, fit that bill to get a high impact job. So we think that two and a half months later, um, each of you is ready to get a high impact job. Now, what we can't guarantee is that each of you will get uh, a job for every interview that you get into. But what we want to do is to increase the likelihood, A, that you will uh, find the right companies where you are a good fit, and B, that you will, um, what's the right way to say this, increase the likelihood that an interview will result in an offer. So we started from whatever baseline you're at, and we have our, we have our own estimates. But our belief is that uh, if you follow our system, that you will increase your chances of finding the right company and getting an interview and completing the interview and matching into a high impact job will be much higher than it would otherwise. And so we have some ideas, and we haven't written them down here yet. How do we define high impact? Part of it is the work that you will do, the learning that you will have, the salary that you will make, the amount of impact that you will make. So what do we provide? Um, so we have, we have done the work on our side that we think is necessary to figure out what our employer is looking for. And so we think that for the two tracks, so machine learning engineering, and data engineering, um, subject to these prerequisites, 
um, we think that all of you would be ready for one of these two tracks. So machine learning engineering and data engineering. We've also provided you with a framework to map and demonstrate your competencies to industry needs. And so that includes your Google site. We force you to put all of your code onto GitHub. We design the challenges so that your outputs are demonstrable um, for each of these two roles. Um, we're there and we will keep providing more support in terms of job searching and interviewing. And we uh, soon you'll be hearing from Yatiana around the alumni community. And we want to work uh, towards mentoring during the zero to two years of experience phase. And then we would like each of you to become mentors um, for people who are new to the program. And then the last thing that we're going to provide is a, a stream of selected job opportunities, people that we've spoken to, companies that are looking to hire. And our offer to them is that um, we have these people, we know uh, who is strong in which areas, and we will try and provide the best possible match. So what do we provide? We provide four things. So we make sure that you have the competencies that employers anywhere, anywhere in the world are looking for, for machine learning engineering or data engineering. So what does this not include? This doesn't include software engineering. We know that many of you could get software engineering jobs, but it's not something that um, we've been specifically training you for. Um, it doesn't include data science. It doesn't include business intelligence. It doesn't include um, analytics engineering. It doesn't include um, statistics. There's a whole bunch of things it doesn't include. But we believe that uh, you, will, you, are, you have these competencies. Um, we have the framework to try and show off these competencies. We're there to provide coaching and mentoring, and then a stream of job opportunities. And so we think that these are comprehensive enough um, for not only for the 50 of you to get a job, but our big challenge is that we're trying to figure out how do we make a system which is expandable to 500 people. Because 50 people, we can still do it um, person to person, but 500 people, we need a system. So what are employers looking for and how can you show them what you have? So I think a key insight here is that none of you will get a job because somebody wants to do you a favor. You will be hired because somebody needs a job done and by paying you one, they will get output of ideally um, three, five, 10, or 15. Um, so if you're joining a company and they're hiring you to be a data engineer, your, the work that you will do in maintaining, building, setting up a pipeline <clears throat> should enable the growth of that business so that that company can earn, um, if they pay you one, they should earn three to five dollars. So you are not, um, nobody is doing you a favor, but you need to be able to demonstrate how you can, um, you have the highest likelihood of delivering value to that business. And so a great example here is um, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan uh, only earned $50 million in salary from the Chicago Bulls. And so he's an outlier for sure, one of the greatest players of all time. But uh, in the last 30 years or 35 years, the 50, I'd say to a large extent on the back of his $50 million salary, the value of the Chicago Bulls basketball team based in the United States increased from $20 million to $3 billion. So important points. Um, one is that you are hired to deliver value for your employer. And two, very, very, very important, um, and this is especially true once you get a job, if you stop delivering value to your employer, there's a good chance that you will no longer be working for your employer. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to recap. You are being hired to deliver value for your employer. You, nobody's doing you a favor. They want to see who has the greatest chance of delivering the most value uh, to you, the employer, as fast as possible. And as soon as you stop delivering value to your employer, there's a good chance that your employer will say goodbye. Um, and that's you need to be aware of that. So employers, uh, and then I'll stop after I make these five points. Employers during the entire process from shortlisting candidates to the interviews, they're trying to predict the future based on their short interaction with you. So they want to know based on the, I mean, how much time could they possibly spend with you? At most eight hours. Um, so in those eight hours, the eight hours could be first interview, telephone screening, technical test, um, technical interview. But what they want to do is to predict the future. And I think what they are thinking in the back of their mind is, are you able to do the job of today? To what extent will you be able to grow into the job of tomorrow? How motivated are you to do this job? Can I rely on you to behave in a professional manner? 
And later on, I think this comes after the first four points, because if you don't satisfy these first four points, the fifth point doesn't matter. Are you good value for money? And I'm just going to cut and paste the points that we made here um, into this document very briefly, just so we can compare them. So what we said is that trainees are looking, are trying to answer similar questions, slightly different. Um, are, am I going to earn it? And this comes first. Am I going to earn enough money to have a decent lifestyle? Am I going to learn on the job? Am I going to have impact? Are you going to treat me nicely? And um, is there a certain amount of respect that I would get from my peers in having this job? And so the process that we are starting now is matching these two points. You have your expectations. You want to earn money. You want to learn. You want to have impact. You want to have fun. Um, it's not nice to be in a high stress, really toxic environment. And you want to have the respect of your peers. And they want you to get a job done. They want you to grow into the job of tomorrow. They, um, I don't know why this thing is sitting here. They want you to grow into the job of tomorrow. They want to make sure that you actually want to do the job so you don't show up and hate your work. Um, they want you to be professional. And that's not only in terms of communication, not gossiping, but it also means that you're a pleasure to be around to a certain extent. And the last point is, is the money that we are investing to what, what sort of multiple am I getting out of this? So if you are doing the work and creating $10 of value, um, that's obviously worth more than somebody who comes in and does the work and creates $2 of value. So I'm going to pause there and see if there's any questions. Am I making any sense? Yes. Thank you, Jikinda. OK. <clears throat> Absolutely. OK, super. Um, so you now have a set of things that you can offer. So one is your technical skills. So this is what you uh, this is what the employer wants. This is what the trainees want. And these are things that you are able to offer. Somebody put their hand up or I heard a, ch a chime. Milky. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like um, one of the questions I have is um, like, um, how do we know uh, how do we know that the payment they are offering us is uh, is good so that's a good question i think there's no um but i don't know if there's one answer to that and it depends so first of all it's not that hard of a question to answer right payment yeah, is a number. Like, it's, it's a number so it's yeah, easier to measure yeah it's a number like our output will be uh, will have an effect on the amount of money that they will be planning to pay us, right? Not, so, not really, not necessarily. I think, okay. so this is where, um, this is where a employing, a getting a job is to a, lot, to a large extent like a relationship, right? You get into a relationship and sometimes some relationships work really well. And so re relationships, I mean, could be romantic, could be friendships, but, um, a full-time job is like a serious relationship. You have expectations of your partner. Your partner expects something from you. But it's very hard. I mean, I don't know how it works uh, in your community, Milky, but if you were to meet somebody and say, I want to start a relationship with you, and because I'm going to put a lot into the relationship, I'm expecting you to put a lot, give a lot back to me right away. It doesn't work like that, right? So this is where we have to look at the signs and try and make a judgment call in the best possible way um, is this relationship going to be useful? And even if you say to the best extent possible that I'm going to be super productive and I'm going to work hard, that doesn't always translate into a higher salary right away. Um, sometimes there are other considerations. At the best company, you might have a bad, your manager might be going through personal problems or maybe the project is being cut or they have very strict salary levels. So it's impossible to predict, I would say, in the six-month time frame, or it's, it's, we can only deal, I would say, in probability. So we can't say that you will definitely, you're, that in the six-month time frame, that the harder you work, the more that you will earn. But I believe that in the 
two-year time frame, that is absolutely true. So what that means is that sometimes you might, some of you may be working harder than other people, and in the first six months that may not be directly uh, compensated in terms of cash. You may be learning more, you may be having more impact. Um, so using one very concrete example, if somebody gets a job at Facebook tomorrow and earns a really good salary, the other person that joins a really tiny startup and is responsible for building their entire um, technology backend from start to, from start to finish might only earn 10% of that person who works at Facebook's salary in the first year. However, that person has probably learned so much more that after a year they could go on and do something else and earn more, start their own business. So salary is only one metric. And I would encourage you to look at it as one metric, but to accept the fact that in the first six months, that it's only in, I would say, the two-year time frame that your salary, you can almost guarantee that your salary will be commensurate with the work that you're doing. Does that make sense? So you have a so if there's any other questions, this is a good time to stop because it, it's really important for me. To, I want us to change our mindset. Um, you have you have something to offer, but employers are also looking for specific things, and I think that we have to view. Um, you know, I know here here's my view. Many of you have come into the training program and the world of employment is kind of a black box. It's not exactly clear how it works. <clears throat> There's lots of jobs and it's kind of, you put your application out into the ether and you hope that it works or jobs come through by somebody recommends you or some friend um, helps you out. You guys are out of that regime. You guys are out of that system. With what you have done over the past two and a half months, we believe and we want to showcase this, especially with batch four, that you, have the skills that can be demonstrated and you can get good jobs. Um, so that changing that mindset from hopes and dreams into I have a concrete plan and this is the plan that I will follow because I understand what employers are looking for and I can increase the chances through hard work of me getting a good job quickly. It's that mindset that we want to inculcate. Desmond, you had a question? Yeah, sure. I, I just wanted you to maybe elaborate for me on point uh, number four. Um, if uh, one that says, can I rely on you to behave in a professional manner? Mm -hmm. So I'd say I'd say there's there's two points to that. One is um, so there's the personal side of that, and there's the professional side of that. So the personal, the professional side first. So if I give you a task. Um, is it going to get done on time? Am I? Do I know that it's thoroughly completed? Um, are you communicating things to me in a way that I can work? I can escalate that to uh, my colleagues or to my my reporting line. Um, are other? Are your teammates happy to work with you? Um, so I'd say those are all those are all points, and I think we've seen that in week nine and ten. So some teams, I think they were organized super professionally. They communicated with their teams, they got their work done, they offered to help other people out, they knew that stuff that they submitted was probably tested and worked through. Um, and other teams, maybe they were managing and it was slightly more ad hoc, but it's that professionalism um, where you get done. And I, there's actually a checklist that I put in the, um, what is the name of the channel, career, da, 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 career questions that I'm gonna put into the career manual as well are you doing all of those specific things which make you behave in a professional manner? So that's, that's half of the side. The other half of the side is that we're all humans and we like working with in a nice environment. So are you a jerk? Um, sometimes, so I've had to work with jerks before and it's difficult. Um, are you a nice person? Do you, are you friendly to other people? Do you help out? If you're in a manager, a managing role, are your team are your team members going to be intimidated by you? Do you create a do you contribute positively to the atmosphere? Are you a gossip? Are you going to pull the team atmosphere down? Are you going to complain about every single little thing, or are you going to make a positive contribution? So I'd say those are the two sides um, to professionalism. Yeah. 
Any other questions? Do we all, are these points all clear to all of us? So the jobs of today, to what extent are we able to do the job of today? To what extent are you able to grow into the job of tomorrow? Your own motivation, are you doing this because you have to do it or are you doing this because you actually really like the field? Um, the professionalism and then the value for money point. So each of you, and again, I'm going to keep going, but I'd like you to put your hands up so that it's a discussion. Um, so job applicants, you in this case, you have a set of things that you're able to offer. So your technical skills, your work ethic, your ability to learn fast, your ability to contribute to and to support the community, and your curiosity. And so I just want to highlight uh, these two points. Um, well, maybe even these, these four points. So we have tried to design our program so that we can show off your work ethic. The work that you are, each of you is able to do and these weekly challenges with tight deadlines, forcing you to learn by yourselves, um, helps us to show off that, hey, when you talk to somebody, you can say, I got all of this done. And by the way, I got it done in a week by myself. I had to teach myself how to learn A, B, and C. And you can show the delta that this is where I was in July 2021, and this is how far I've come in two and a half months. And so showing that and being able to demonstrate that concretely. This is one of the reasons why we've really tried to emphasize this. And I feel like we've, this, we haven't done super well on this part of, a big part of that is our fault. Um, the ability to support and contribute to community is just super important when it comes to work. Um, the ability to communicate, to say where you are, and Nabil and Nahom had said this as well. I think Ting said this as well. Your technical skills are useless um, if you're not able to work as part of a team and help, other, and help others, and also to be able to showcase your curiosity. And finally, your professionalism. And so I just want to go through this mapping that we have here. Eventually, I'm going to get this into a nicer format. But the employer is looking for, are you able to do the job of today? And so you need to show this through your technical skills and your work ethic. So in terms of your technical skills and your work ethic, being able to do the job of today from a technical perspective is ground zero. If you can't do today's job from a technical perspective, you should not be applying for that job. Um, most job descriptions are only approximations of the actual role. Um, sometimes it's due to HR, sometimes people put everything that they want. Um, but your job here is to, dem to demonstrate that you understand what it is that they want you to do when you start the job. You have to be able to demonstrate that you are able to do the job, if not on day one, then day two, or at latest, latest by week two. Um, if you're not able to do the job right away on day two, then explain what you would be, what you would do to pick something up. And so the example here, uh, you guys have all used AWS. If they're a Google Cloud platform house, then OK, explain what are you going to do to map your understanding of what you know on AWS to map over to Google Cloud. Um, you need to be able to have a sense of where your role fits into the overall organization. And that's why the question that I was asking in today's stand up is important. And these, this graph, this really nice graphic that I like, which is part of the careers manual, um, and I'm going to show it just briefly here. Um, this is important. You need to be able to understand where does the job that you're applying for, where does it fit into this end-to-end -end machine learning or data engineering flow. You don't need to know all of this because nobody knows all of this well. But you need to be able to meaningfully speak about whether you are um, here on the source side, ingestion, storage, historical, predictive, or the output side. You need to have some sense of that. And the graph that we saw from one of the groups yesterday was a great example of being able to demonstrate that. Have a sense of where your role fits into the ML engineering and the data engineering ecosystem. And you need to be able to showcase, and this is the advantage that you have, that you will be one of the hardest working people that they have ever hired. So ground zero, you need to be able to show that you have the, to be able to do the job of today. Technically, you have your technical skills and you have your work ethic. Now, each of these points, um, this is where your profile page has to be able to demonstrate this. So through your video, through good selection of your keywords at the top, through your one or at most two line description, through your GitHub, through your CV, and through your showcasing the work that you've been able to do, we believe that each that all of those put together um, is will be able to demonstrate that you're able to do the job, 
um, that you want to do the job, you won't be able to explain point C, most likely, um, to have a sense of this probably comes later on. And the hardest working people, I think this is where it has to come through um, either on the initial telephone screening, the initial phone call for sure, but there's a lot that you can do to showcase your, your hunger to learn because that is something that cannot be taught, it can only be selected for. Your motivation. Um, we believe that um, we're training for at least 80th percentile. Why 80th percentile? It's just an estimate, it's not an exact number yet. But 80% of you will go into jobs where you will be expected to work less than you're working at 10 Academy. And so both Ada, Nahom, Nabil, three batch three alumni, they're working at hardworking companies and all of them are working less than they're working here. So this is one of the great things that you should be able to showcase to say, I am willing to work harder than people that you are used to. Um, and this is something which is rare and which is unique. Um, and uh, this is something which 100% of your uh, employers will find interesting. So how, do you, how can you showcase this? So showcasing the amount of work that you did uh, during a coding challenge, um, showcasing that I got all of this done, week six challenge in one week, and explaining um, what were some of the challenges. Your GitHub commit history is a big part of that. And then um, little things, if you're on an interview and they say, um, they ask you a question that you don't know, then you can do little things like, look, I'm not sure exactly what that is, but uh, looping back in a couple of hours and showcasing, um, saying that you've actually learned something about it. So these are in order. So the first is able to do the job of today, most important. Next most important is how motivated are you to do this job? Third most important is in terms of your career skills. Um, what's your professionalism like? What's your ability to contribute to and to support a community? Um, each of you, each of you will have, um, Yababel made this point to a subgroup of the people here. Um, we're preparing you for jobs anywhere in the world and the, the expectations on you coming from Ethiopia, from Kenya, from Nigeria, you, are, you will be to a large extent an unknown quantity. Ten Academy is not yet well known. So the expectation may not be very high. Uh, and that means that you have to, each of you will have to work harder to showcase this. It means showing up on time for the interview. It means being ready with a backup phone number. It means having, uh, being cleanly dressed. It means having a really good internet connection and a backup internet connection. It means making sure you don't get the time zones wrong. There's a checklist that's provided here. And I'd like all of you to um, use that. And then in terms of community and communication, um, that is, I've written up some parts here, but being able to, to communicate well, to ask questions well. Next week, we had hoped for this week, we're not gonna manage it. Next week, we're gonna do, to, do a tutorial on asking questions. But uh, from, in terms of being able to do the job of today from a career perspective, demonstrating your professionalism and demonstrating your ability to contribute to and support a community are um, what employers are looking for. <clears throat> this is a subset of the point above being able to reliance on you to behave in a professional manner. And there's some element of autonomy here so that if I ask you to do a task, I don't need to babysit you or to over manage you is also an important point. And the points are the same as above. Um, the next point, and this is not true of every company, but every employer, just like they want somebody who's hardworking is uh, to find somebody who will grow with the company. So just like employee, just like all of you trainees said that you want to learn, um, companies or employers are also looking for people who are able to learn. And so demonstrating your ability to learn fast and demonstrating your curiosity. Um, asking questions is the single best way to demonstrate your curiosity. Um, <clears throat> for large companies, this is even more important. Small companies will tend to want somebody who can do the job of today right away. And for big companies, I was talking to somebody who works at Stripe and he was laughing at me because he said at his company, and he used to work at Facebook, he used to work at Google, he was saying that they don't expect anyone to um, be able to do anything new or even to do anything more than what they've been told for the first six to eight months. So big companies have a process, small companies want, to be, want you to be productive right away. So these are a couple of points on our, um, 
on our career philosophy. So I'm not sure who's not getting, so half Tom and Germain are saying access denied. I'm not sure you can ask for access to any document that you don't have access to. Um, you should have access to those documents, but let me know if you don't. But so we can neatly go into a Q&A session, but the, the major point that I have here is there are two ways that, so this is a little bit about our philosophy, but concretely what happens next. Um, each of you should start applying for jobs, and that starts with over the next three days, I need each of you to get your profile perfect. Um, and so there's a checklist that's provided here at the top. Um, but before before we go to the checklist, I actually want to go through, and so all of this is is tapping back to the careers manual. If you don't have access to the careers manual, um, you need access to it. So the two roles, it's important to me that each of you picks um, ideally one of these two roles. Um, some of you may be ready for both roles. We've dropped ML ops because right now it feels like it's there are not a huge number of jobs in the industry, and it's also just getting complicated with three different roles. So we would like you to pick two different, one of the two roles. If you are super keen and super motivated, then you can say that you're open for both. Um, and so what have we done here? We've put together a listing, a pre-interview checklist. And why have we put this together? Um, is to help you also think about which of these two roles do you want to pick up. So this is for ML engineering. So you're ready to explain to an interviewer. You should be able to be able to explain um, each of these questions to an interviewer. And you should be able to show experience in each of the following. So I'm just going to cover the categories. Software engineering, data pipelines, and ETL. Um, a little bit less important than for a data engineer. Uh, software engineering, super important. What we're seeing is that in industry, machine learning engineering is mostly software engineering and productionizing, some productionizing, of ML models. So this is, it's impossible for us to tell you completely 100% this is what it's like, but this is what we are seeing um, large in a large majority. So software engineering, you know something about data pipelines and ETL, including some experience with databases. Um, you can do your ET, you can do your exploratory data analysis, strong Python, strong SQL, strong knowledge of Java, of JavaScript and other languages like React, Go, Scala, um, et cetera, et cetera some of the machine learning work that you've done here. So general machine le learning and optimization, at least one specific case of NLP or computer vision, maintenance of and design of end-to-end -end ML flows. You have some knowledge of stats and ML anal and modeling analysis. You can use data science tools. You've at least logged into and used something on AWS. You don't need to be an expert. You have some knowledge of ML, DevOps, and CI, CD tools. Um, some knowledge of visualization and dashboarding and project management tools. And we think that you could quickly learn um, these three points, how to translate business needs into experimental design, um, working on or configuration of some of these AWS, GCP, or Azure, and things like infrastructure as code. Data engineering, we have something very similar. Um, so you're ready to explain to an interviewer these points here. You can explain this chart. They're all from the same venture capital firm. I like this uh, plot because I think it's nicely uh, laid out. And then in terms of ability to show experience, so Python and SQL production level, um, SQL and NoSQL databases. Very important is data pipelining, uh, ETL and orchestration. You can some uh, working on query optimization. So how do you get uh, pipelines to emerge faster? Airflow, Spark, transforming data. Uh, how to merge different data sets, EDA, ML DevOps, CI, CD, a little bit less emphasis on machine learning, same data science tools, same visualization and dashboarding, and the same project management tools, and then a slightly different list of uh, what you should quickly learn. I'm going to go through our checklist really briefly, so we've put this together as well. This is for your profile. Um, so this is a checklist because I've gone through a lot of profiles, given a lot of feedback, um, and these are the points that we need to see. So the point, super simple and super clear, please 
do not, um, don't expect an employer to take you seriously if you haven't taken your profile seriously. So your profile needs to be, I won't say perfect, but I would rather say error-free. It has to be error-free. And so we've put down a checklist here, um, so in terms of your track. So it has to be clearly stated for MLNG or Data Eng. Um, if you think that you are able to span both, good, go for it, but just be aware that it's difficult. Um, picking the right expertise keywords is important. Um, it may seem like just writing stuff down that doesn't is not important, but people are overwhelmed with information. And this summary at the top and being able to see, does this person cover the right set of keywords and are they using keywords that indicate that he or she knows what they're talking about is important. So pick the right expertise keywords and um, organize them in a good way. Important here is bold up to five of them. You need to have up to five of them bolded. We are going to um, showcase those on our public site. So those five should be the key ones that when somebody wants to find out what you can really do, they're looking for your bolded uh, keywords. Your short description. So before we had put one or two pair, one or two sentences. Um, your first sentence should really be descriptive on what you can do. Um, should be a nice summary of your skills. And the second sentence, if you are knowledgeable um, enough to be able to say the type of role that you want, great, put that in. But please don't put in a if something very generic that says, I want to change the world through my skills, or I want to join a well-meaning company, or I want um, a hard-working set of team members. I think these generic sentences, let's let's drop them. There's a lot of information on our profiles already. Video, some comments there, your CV. I'm going to change this to error-free. I just want to give an example where I shared one of your profiles with an employer, and the employer came back and said, look, there's an there's a obvious typo here, a typographical mistake. And so I'm not sure if this person is really ready to share with my team because this person hadn't put the effort into making their CV free of errors. GitHub, as Yevabel mentioned, um, so for GitHub, your project profile summaries and your CVs. This is one of the big, 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 big differences between you now and you um, three months ago. So you now should be able to demonstrate all of the keywords and all of the points that I talked about when it comes to ML engineering and data engineering through um, your project work. So each of those points must be demonstrated through your project work, through your work experience, could be a university project, but you can not only say that you can do A-B testing, but you can say, here's my code, here's my link to GitHub, this is what I did, this is some idea of the scale of what I did, this is how much data I had, this is why I think this is only an indicative sample because we didn't get enough statistical power to really make it demonstrative. But you need to comprehensively CV, GitHub, and profile showcase each of those points to showcase to an employer that you can actually do the job of tomorrow. So I don't want anyone to go into an interview and to say, I can do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, without being able to confidently say that I can do A, which is evidenced by project one. I can do B, and that's evidenced by projects two, three, and four. And I can do C, and here are a set of projects. And by the way, here's a link to my GitHub code. You can see that it was checked in on time. Here are some plots. We can talk through it if we want. You can look through my code if you'd like to. Um, and this is how A, B, and C works. So what we've tried to design, and this is going back to all of the Karate Kid stuff at the end, each of you has been, quote unquote, forced has been forced by us to do um, all of this work, but the work that you have done ties very closely to what employers are looking for. And now over the next three days, I want us to tie all of this together to make a really solid, tight, specific profile, um, which will link to what employers are looking for. So I'll stop there and have uh, a sip of coffee. So any questions? So we can go neatly into the Q&A session.
So people are saying access denied. Access denied to what? To the careers manual? So please send a request for access. You, should, you shouldn't have access denied, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what to say there. You can, I'm not, I haven't got anything, I haven't got any requests for access yet. Okay, now I'm seeing them come in. Uh, Germain? Yeah, yes, I, I would like to ask if these profiles we are making like are being uh, updated, like if you want to update something, you can update then being updated on the profile we shared. I don't understand your question, please. Like our profiles will be like we will always update something to our profile. Like you, you might want to change something like on your CV connected to the profile. Or you but can it, it's your pro but it's your profile, right? That's why we use Google Sites. It's not our yeah, we, profile, it's your profile. Okay. We will be having the full access end time. It has nothing to do with us, actually. We're just there to we are there to support you to get a job. Okay. We don't own your CV. We don't own your profile. That's yours. And actually, what we're also seeing is that um, even people from batch three, they're coming back and they're keeping their profiles updated because it's a nice summary uh, way to summarize. But it, it's your thing. So please do do with it whatever you need to whatever you need to do. OK, thank you. But you should be updating. And that's one of the um, so anyone who wants to be a data engineer should be should be making sure that week nine and ten is part of their is part of is features on their profile because if they haven't if anyone applies for a data engineering job and they're not showcasing um, that they've worked with Airflow, Kafka, and Spark, then they're reducing their chances of even getting an interview. Um, and so I don't know why anyone would do that. So let's take questions. It's like a stunned silence. I wish we were in person so we could get some idea of what the of what happened. I don't know if I'm I'm making any sense. So Binyam, please unmute and uh, give me a give me a more specific question. Which broad class? Okay, hello. Hi. Uh, yeah. So um, the question that I want to ask is: uh, We had a lot of uh, topics that we had to learn uh, in in the sense of machine learning uh, in in areas of data engineering, uh, machine learning engineering, and others, uh, other topics too. So uh, when we apply, uh, if we are not uh, confident with our technical skills, uh, what do you recommend so that we can start with uh, with uh, work that does not demand a lot of uh, technicality, just uh, maybe as an uh, as a data analyst or something that we can build uh, our career throughout. So, I mean, that's a, I think this confidence question is, is a good one. Um, so we're asking, we're asking you, I'm asking you to trust me that you are ready because we've talked to employers. Um, you may not, you may not know everything, but we think that you know enough to be productive. Okay. So I, I don't know how to, 
I don't know how to answer that question beyond saying that um, we have brought you, we've brought, we've worked with everyone that's here and you guys have done an impressive, impressive amount of work and everyone, everyone who is here um, can get a professional job by, by Christmas time if they want to. I won't say by the 4th of October, the process takes time. There are people who have some knowledge gaps. That process may take time. But for any motivated person, I'm confident that we can get them into a good job by uh, Christmas, if they're motivated. If they're ready to hear no from, to fail a handful of interviews. I mean, one of our top people last year failed six interviews before getting a super job. And that's unfortunately part of it as well. Um, because the system, the the whole talent system is not always perfect, and sometimes employers just don't want the person that the right person at the right time. So, yeah, I think the confidence question, Binyam, what I would say is you need to trust, or I hope that you trust, that uh, we've got you to a point where um, you are ready. You have a stable platform on which to um, build your next steps. OK, thank you. But, I, but what, what else can we do? Because it's an important point. Uh, well, uh, I think uh, this is a broader, broader class, maybe. And uh, if we have uh, at least distributed the work, the, the class, maybe um, select a specification. Let's say if uh, I enroll in Ten Academy and uh, I wanted, uh, I don't know what uh, all the class, what all the class about. So you give me a, a, brief, a, brief, a brief introduction about the classes. And then I enroll in one, only one class, maybe the data engineering part. And then maybe build that that part. Uh, with, no, so what, that can what can I? But what can I do for you today now? Uh, okay. Uh, nothing. I mean, no. But I just that, want. That, I, I just want you to have an advice. Yeah, I just want to have uh, to have an advice from you, so that you can tell me uh, which specific things does not require that much uh, intensive skills, technical skills. And then just I will just enroll there. I will just apply there, and I will uh, I will improve my technical skills starting from uh, the, 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 that that uh, that work. So that's what that was what why I wanted to hear. So I hope. So I think what you're missing. So one is you have to believe that you are ready, um, and if you don't believe it, we believe it. And that's why we've put the system together. Um, and we've also made it such that if you guys don't get employed, then our whole financial model dies and we've wasted the last five, year of our, five years of our life. So you can take it as we've invested a whole bunch of time because we think that you are employable. So we have more to lose than you do. So you have to, it's, we're not just talking, but we're actually, we've made that investment of time and energy. Um, so from a confidence perspective, we definitely believe in each of you who have gotten this far that you're ready. Um, I think what you need to do, Binyam, and others who may be feeling the same way, is to look through, let's spend the next three days, and this is why we've done it. There are no other assignments to do. You should be asking questions. You should be thinking about which specific type of job do I want to get? And then you should be telling us where are you... Um, what skills do you need to build? Maybe you feel like your SQL is too weak, or maybe you don't have a sense when faced with a problem of exactly um, how to approach the problem, or maybe you're not fully confident in your uh, software engineering. I don't know. I don't know enough about every person right now. But I think that that thought process is important. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. To what extent is confidence a problem? How, how are we feeling about confidence? Are people feeling a little bit nervous? Yeah. 
Yeah, not now. Stella, do you want to, can we hear from you? Okay, thank you. So, Is it only uh, people with the last name Cisse who are nervous? Maybe Bethlehem should also <laughs> unmute. Okay, maybe. <laughs> so, okay, I'm just, I'm so, just joking. I see, I see. So, uh, I share uh, Binyam's feeling. Uh, like, uh, for example, the things we were used to do was, uh, we, were, we were given a task. So, the task was also hard. So, we tried to submit something on Wednesday. Uh, whether it's right, wrong, we do it our way, our way, then we will submit it on Saturday. Like, uh, most of us aren't that much satisfied, uh, or there are many things that lack on that project uh, for us to show it to other people. So uh, we haven't, uh, we didn't have a time to clean it up or uh, fix them up or sort some things, because if we try to exactly show what we did on the first week, for the employers, there is many things that need to be organized and everything, in my opinion. So there is that that kind of gap that gives us a confidence issue, in my opinion. So that's why uh, we were, okay, I personally would love to get um, some kind of easy job and see the environment, the work environment and the surrounding and develop as I go. So that's is, on my side. Is Yababel on the call? I don't know if he's here. No, I guess he's not here. Okay, so so I would I would encourage each and every person here not to settle for an easy job. Please do not, um, because that's I don't understand why you would do that. Each of you came here to get a job, a good job, a high impact job. So if you settle for doing data analysis somewhere because it's a job, then you guys told me that you want uh, money. So if you get a simple job, I don't know how much money you're going to earn. A simple job, you probably don't learn as much. Simple job, you don't have as much impact. Simple job, fine, you might be part of a community and you can pass your time. And a simple job, you probably don't earn the same sort of respect of your peers. Um, so one of the things that apparently we've missed and um, so I, I take this on board, we have to change this, is letting you know that the, the projects that we've been asking you to do and the way we've been asking you to do it is pretty unusual. It's, as I don't, for Nutnail and Binyam and others who are thinking about it, um, so Nahom and Nabil, who I think many of you studied with, they said that they probably have a month to do what we ask you guys to do in a week. And they get paid to do it. And they're being specifically told what to do. And they're not being thrown out in the deep end. I mean, so it's what you guys were just asked to do in the last uh, 10 days is, I don't, I think maybe the percent of employers that would ask you to do that is extremely, extremely, extremely low. Um, the majority of you, what I would expect you to do, and if it's hard to say, but just to put a number, an estimate to it, um, is that you will be asked to maintain a model, a machine learning model, or maintain an existing feature, not design something completely new. Um, the same is true for the data engineers. You'll probably, probably be asked to maintain something which is existing and not to design something completely new. So for those of you who are worried about it, I think it's good to bring it out. I'd like to hear about this. I would like to talk about it. But I want to reassure you that I think your pathway into work is um, you are more prepared than you realize. And this is why, um, this is exactly like the Karate Kid. Please go and watch this movie where you guys are worried about work. But in the Karate Kid, this guy was going to get beat up at school. And he was really mad at his teacher because he said, you haven't taught me anything. I'm just fixing your house. And then he showed him how all these things led to him being able to beat this other kid up after school. And of course he wins and he gets the, he gets the girl and everything's perfect. So you're more ready than you realize, but uh, I don't know how to make you understand this. Um, yeah, I, I can only say that, um, the, 
the type of throw you in the deep end and sink or swim is actually to a large extent why you guys are here and those people who gave up during week zero are not. Um, and I think many of those people could have also managed, but a lot of them just decided like, yeah, just forget it. It's not worth it. I don't think I can make it anyways. But actually all of you guys did persevere and you guys did a huge amount of work. Um, and you guys persevered and you keep week on week, you guys have managed to survive a really, really challenging process. I think that we're asking, we're probably asked, we've probably got you guys to do um, a significant amount more work than we've ever asked any other trainee batch to do. And the trainees that we've placed into work, they employers keep coming to us with super good feedback. So I can't promise you that the um, that it'll always be a direct pathway. I can guarantee you that many of you will fail interviews. I can guarantee you that many of you will um, have a job and then lose a job because it didn't work out or the manager was a jerk or the company ran out of money or whatever. But I can also guarantee you that if you stick with this system of you guys um, have enough knowledge, you have the work ethic, you have this mentality of lifelong learning, and you have the mentality of I will succeed along with and because I help out and I am helped by my community, then I think that system will get you much faster up this money, learning, impact, community, respect pipeline than um, not trusting yourself or not trusting us and falling off that pipeline. Elias? Okay, on the point Nathanael and uh, some of the rest, like from my perspective, like if you, if you don't take a little bit of risk and if you want a job in like where you are 100% aware of every concept, like you, it's probably hard to get a job like that. Plus you will probably not learn that much. So I think Always you have to be like ready to learn and also take a little bit of risk. And even if like when you get a job, like if you know every concept, but after that, like you cannot really be sure like there is not going to be a new task that would require another concept. So like having a perspective that I will be able to learn anything new would be a better perspective when I think about it. So can I ask a show of hands here before I go to Zell? Um, how many of you feel like they're ready to be parents? Or they could at some point in their life become a parent. I'm not saying today, but they could at some point in their life be a parent, be a father, a mother. So I think everyone has raised their hand. So none of you have ever had children before. But you guys, each of you trust yourselves to be a parent to a child, which is surely much harder than doing somebody's machine learning model. And none of you took a class in parenting. But it's the same sort of approach. You guys have been raised and you have enough life experience and you've watched your parents and your uncles and your aunts and your grandparents. And you know that when the time comes and you have this tiny baby in your hand, that you'll figure it out. And you figure it out as you go and you'll make mistakes and so will your kids. Um, but you trust that you'll figure it out. So if you trust yourself to raise a human being, please trust yourself to do somebody's simple job and earn your money. And if you don't trust yourself to be a parent, then that's, um, yeah, I mean, then we have to, I'm not the right person to talk to. You should go to whatever your religious faith is because I can't help you there. Yeah, so you, yeah, Yosef's saying if you don't trust yourself to be a parent, then that's a red flag. Um, okay, uh, Zalalem, you had a question. Okay, yes, thank you. <clears throat> you mentioned about that uh, one of the batch three employees, after failing uh, six interviews, got a uh, super nice job. So, yeah. what I want to ask is, uh, I was just assuming that he, he or she were applying for the same position, more or less the same. So 
is it that different companies are looking for different things in that position or is it that uh, a thing that you mentioned about big companies don't expect you to do a lot in the first uh, periods and small companies uh, expect you expect uh, a lot from you i mean uh, what were probably that you have observed so you know, I don't know exactly what happened there. Um, I still can't fully explain it, but I think that this this is why I said in response to Milky's question about money, I can say in the two-year time frame it will work itself out. But sometimes it's it's like a relationship, right? You know, you wonder why if people who are looking for a relationship, if they sometimes you can't find the right person, or you know, why does a relationship go bad? Sometimes it's I don't know, bad stuff happens, or it's just not a great fit, or it's it's hard to say. I think in this case, during the interviews, for whatever reason, this person wasn't able to showcase his or her skills in the way that the employers were expecting. And yeah, I think the best thing that this person did was to have the right mindset of saying, I'm going to take each and every interview as a learning experience. And um, each interview got better and better and better. And the maturity that came out towards the end was the thing that uh, last that resulted in a um, in a really good uh, in a really good job. And so what I mean I can share my own experience with 10 Academy in terms of raising money. So we at the start we were we had some success probably on the basis of um, probably on the basis of personal contacts or things that we had done before, we were had some success at the start and then we entered a three-year phase which we're just hopefully getting out of where nobody wanted to give us any money. And we had to keep learning about what, it, what exactly is it that we can do well and to take every rejection or every discussion as a learning experience. So the courage and the strength and the... Um, and this is where I think it's actually good for each of you to have each other that you can call each other up and say, look, you know, this, this employer just rejected me and I got a no and that kind of stinks. Um, so, you know, just, I don't know, watch a movie together or just tell bad jokes or cheer the other person up. And then, yeah, then it'll work out. But I, there's no one answer to that question. All, the only thing we can do is improve your likelihood of getting... Um, getting an interview and converting that interview into a likely job. And my dream would be that we can predict, um, we can get that up to 50%. That, uh, and I think actually we're there for many people. When I tell people, I was talking to a really experienced data engineer on the weekend who works for um, one of the big publishing companies, Springer Nature. And he was like, he says he hasn't even learned Kafka. So he's working as a software architect and he says Kafka has been on his list to learn for a long time. And I have no doubt that you guys don't know everything about Kafka and you don't need to yet. But our goal is to get you into an entry level position and for you to meaningfully be able to talk about, to know how these different things fit together and to know what you don't know. Yeah, and I think what Milky has said is true that the learning process, um, that's important. Don't get down with rejections and don't get nervous because there will be other interviews. Um, one point that I want to make, and we've tried hard here, and I think we've gotten there. I don't know, but I think we've gotten there. We, if we want your um, sphere of applications not to be limited to your home country, but to be anywhere, anywhere in the world. And that means that all of a sudden there's a huge number of potential job opportunities which open up. Um, and that's useful because there are, by my count, I don't know, 50,000 machine learning engineer jobs open today. And if we keep narrowing it down, so some of them don't want remote workers, some of them want same time zone, some of them want US citizens, some of them want lots of experience, but we're only 50 people. And so, and yeah, with the 50 people we have, um, we are, if you stay motivated, you follow our system and you keep putting, what is our system? Our system is you guys have already done the work, now just uh, showcase it in a professional way and be optimistic and be hungry in the same way that you've been optimistic and hungry and put the work in and this is what we can't teach you. 
the perspective on how things fit together, the confidence to say, this is what I think is important to learn, and this is how much I know about it, and this is what I don't know yet, and this is how I'm going to reframe that. That, that, that you guys should discuss, and you have to think about it, and you have to read a little bit, just like you read about Kafka and Airflow and Spark, and make that work in your mind. So let's keep going with questions. We have a couple more minutes. Same. So how my question is going to be about how do we make it apparent to employers and people interviewing us that even if we don't know specifically everything they want us to know that we are capable of learning it because as you said they have an expectation that we bring more value than the resources they put into us and they want everything at least as much as they can get out of hiring the single person so how do we make that apparent so you guys are so we've done that work for you we believe that in what we have uh, decided to teach you, it is the right skills to get an entry-level job in these two fields. So this is, if you look at this checklist, I believe our, our hypothesis is that if you can fulfill all the points on, I'm going to show you, sorry, some uh, mosquito here. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. I'm going to present something. Our hypothesis answers this, answers this question. If you can do all of these, then we think that you are ready for a entry-level job. And we think that you've co we've covered all of these points, right? So we've covered, except for software engineering. Um, but many of you, this is where we were always clear that if you want to do machine learning engineering, that you need to be able to work on the agile approach, testing, unit testing, QA, um, some experience with different databases. Um, so this one, maybe we haven't done as much, but you can pick up that experience. You have done uh, ETL, you have done EDA, you have done Python, SQL. We may need to work on JavaScript if you have a software engineering background. You have it anyways. You guys have done all of this. You've 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 done all of this, and you've done all of this with us. So that's that's our offer. That's what we wanted to do. Is same still here? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Uh, so that that's our offer, and that's that's what we think is uh, what. So you are ready now. You just have to demonstrate that through your projects, okay. um, and and I think that what the the part that each of you will also have to demonstrate is the maturity to know what you don't know. So I nobody should say they're an expert in Kafka or Airflow or Spark yet. But the maturity of knowing that I have, you know how they fit together and you know something about it is, we believe, enough at this level. Because it means that you can already be effective from um, on maintaining something existing from, if not day two, then on week two, which is already much further ahead than other people. You can communicate. You know how things fit together. And you have this self-learning and community-driven mindset. So okay. uh, I have yeah. another question. Yeah. It's on our profiles for yeah. the profile pages for the images that are supposed to be representative of the project. Yeah. How much should we put into it? Designing a sort of a small poster that is representative of the work, or should it be more of a, something that we've taken from the project that illustrates the work because how much effort is too much and separates it from the message that we're trying to send so i think yeah i th so you're i think what you want is that if somebody skims that they that they're interested so i would put more effort into the really representative projects so for the people who are going for data engineering jobs they should showcase their data engineering product projects a little bit more. Um, for the people who want to go for ML engineering jobs, 
there's probably one or two projects that are really fancy and nice that they want to showcase, so they should use um, they should showcase those. What I would say is it should it, you should be able to say yes to the following question. If somebody who is hiring for this the job that I really want looks at this visual, will they want to read the description? Is it skimmable and is it attractive? Does it stand out? So just putting any graphic there doesn't it's not so useful, but people will skim your CV and they will want to get a sense of hey, this person is doing something which is probably related to the work that I'm doing, and I want to know a little bit more. And so I think this, this goes to another point. What aspect of the projects are you showcasing? So you've done predictive modeling during the, um, the pharmaceutical sales prediction. You've done A-B testing. Um, you've done the telecoms data analysis. You guys have done sentiment analysis as part of your Week Zero project. Um, you did the speech to text and the natural language processing. You've done the data engineering. You've done the causal graphs. You've done an ETL pipeline in your Python um, package. So what aspect of that do you want to showcase? And so I think this is where, over the next uh, three days, it's, it's not only about the work. You guys should actually talk to each other and think a little bit what type, if you, believe us that we will get you ready for the job of tomorrow, um, then you should think a little bit more about um, what is it that you want to you want to showcase. But it should be attractive and clear and it should be relevant to that technical skill. Daniel? Okay, thank you. Um, what I wanted to ask is during our interview session, is mentioning our uh, weak sides, for example, saying that I know this skill, but uh, I'm not expert at it. Uh, is that a is that a good thing, or uh, do we have to hide that part? Never hide it, but I think I think instead of saying I'm not an expert at it, why don't you qualify the amount that you do know about it? So you can say I've uh, this is what I can do. And this is this is how far I've gotten, and this is what I want to learn next. Is another way to say the same thing in a positive, in a positive way. It's just like it's just like a relationship, right? You would never say, um, "Look, I'm, I I tend to show up late to dates, and I don't have much money, um, so I'm not going to be able to buy you dinner." You should then, because this person will never call you back. You should probably say, look, I'm still working on getting a new job. This is the type of course that I'm doing. And so hopefully next time I'll be able to buy you dinner. I think, I mean, I don't know how it works for you. But I think showcasing, um, you know, even showcasing what you don't know and the fact that instead of just saying I'm not an expert at it, being able to qualify the amount that you do know gives a lot of information and it gives a lot of maturity. It shows a lot of maturity. So I would just answer your question, take the same thing, but phrase it in a way that shows you know how much you don't know. And that's that's actually the hardest thing. I had, I heard this quote once when I finished uh, university where, and after your undergrad, you think you know everything. And after your master's, you realize you don't know anything. And if you finish your PhD, you know what you don't know. And I think that's uh, to a certain extent the depth. Chikinda? Uh, I, I have a, a question. Uh, it, the, when you're going through the, the interview, you said that uh, if you're asked about uh, uh, maybe a skill or a, or a piece of technology and you say you don't know about it, you say that you, ha you can revert back and after reading and uh, talk to them about it. Are we supposed to do it uh, by email like uh, uh, earlier, I had a, an interview with you, and you asked me about this, and I've done some reading, and I, I believe, is it something like that? You could do that, right? I mean, what it depends on the, this is where it's, it's hard to give you a concrete answer. But if I was interviewing somebody, and I asked them a question about, um, I asked them a question, and they couldn't answer it fully, but they sent me an email, because you'll always have an email, you'll get a calendar inv invitation, you can just send a really quick note, that I, I didn't feel great about uh, 
the level of knowledge I was able to showcase during our discussion. I did some reading about it, and I realized that actually um, I learned a little bit more about how this is ABC or how this fits into one, two, three. Um, it goes back to this, this kind of mapping that we said. So there's doing the job of today, and there's your work ethic. And it's rare to find somebody who will take the effort um, and this is this is kind of a meta point. You guys are much harder working than the um, you guys are sort of I would say ninety fifth percentile in terms of work ethic. So showcase that. That's something that no one can take away from you. You may not believe it. You may think that I don't know Americans in Silicon Valley are all super hard working. You guys are ninety fifth percentile workers, and so take opportunities to showcase that. So. To answer your question in summary, Jikinda, yeah, you can do that. You can send a quick note. Any other questions, guys? Do we? Does everyone here uh, not know which track they absolutely want to pursue? Does anyone worry that if they pick data engineering or machine learning engineering, they'll be stuck there for life? Azaria? Um, yeah, um, like uh, you, you said unsure, right? Yeah, I said unsure. Yeah. So you're not sure. OK. So what are you thinking? Well, I had set it for MLOS, but I saw that it got um, <laughs> scraped. So um, I'm going to think about it later this afternoon. But um, yeah. Uh, but I'm so going towards some uh, machine learning, more or less. The machine learning engineering. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone else want to discuss their their point? You guys can also schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. But the, the point I wanted to make here is that there's a difference between your first job and your career. And this is only one step on your career journey. So I wouldn't be too, I wouldn't worry about it too, 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 too much. Um, I would rather pick one. Both fields are growing. There's huge opportunities in both. So I would rather pick one and then try and maximize um, the, the type of job that you can get. But I, I think it's, they're both, there's big opportunities in both. Yeah, any last questions? Last two questions before we wrap up? So let me ask a different question then. Um, we come into this with our own, we, we, the team, come into this with our own biases. And so we may be missing something. So the confidence aspect is something that Yabival and I have discussed at length, but you know, maybe that's, we've under, underestimated that. What else are we missing? What else do we need to provide to get, uh, get as many of you as possible into work by Christmas? Malef? Melev? Is it Malev or Melev? Malev, Melev. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so I share most of what's been said about the confidence. And uh, I'm not sure maybe if you could take a look at what, what we've done and <clears throat> advise us a specific track. I think that would help uh, greatly. Okay, I would say the clear distinction is if you um, if you are comfortable in your level of software engineering knowledge, then machine learning engineering. And if you want us to put a rubric together for that, we can try. Otherwise, data engineering is open to is open to everyone. Everyone here is ready for for that as well. So mock interviews, yeah, I think that we um, we definitely have to do that. Um, yeah, we have to we have to provide feedback. One of the challenges is just how do we 
operationalize that. I think if we were doing this in person, then you just interview each other and then you can walk around and give tips. Um, yeah, maybe we should stage a mock interview and ask questions. I don't know exactly how to do that. We'll think about that. Um, what else What else are we missing? So is, is this point about not being sure of which track to to pursue, is that, a, is that a major point? Is that, is it too free to say, pick whatever you want and here are some guidelines? So on the, on the point about tracks, can I, can you guys type your answers? Is it too free or is there, are, is there enough guidance? Okay, so Yosef, thanks for, can you tell us more or tell me more? You can hear me. Yeah. Yeah, well, by vague, I mean that uh, it's not, it's not that clear that if we want to pursue in data engineering and middle ops and everything, I mean, obviously, the machine learning perspective is going to be a little bit difficult if you don't have some software background, but, yeah, but even with the difference between MLOps and data engineering. It's, I mean, the projects that we've done, we're not really comfortable in them. And I know that you guys are just seeing that if we're productive enough, we can just pursue it more and that's why it counts. But uh, I mean, the track, I, we really don't know about how, how the demand works, how the working environment for the, for the data engineering and the MLOps thing really is. So I think, I think this whole thing should be, I mean, can be more clear if we have other trainees from batch three or batch four, you know, talk about us through this, how this, how this job application went through for them. I think this, that would be much more efficient and gives it an age to this whole vagueness that we have. That's my thought. And the, what, what is the vagueness? Is it about the track or is it entering this unknown field of applying for a real job? The track, the track is a little bit vague, and also with the job. I mean, if I, for example, if I, if I am assigned to do some data engineering, what kind of time do I have to? If, for example, just let's assume that this whole week nine and ten is a job that I have, okay, and then that's a job. So I'm assigned to do some Spark on it, some, some Spark spooky stuff, some coding and everything. So. Will it be like this? Will it be like the in academy, or will it be other person assigned to me? Am I the only one working there? You know, it's not that much of an. I mean, we got the whole idea of how things flow, but there's a little bit of something that you can sense that it's missing. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out what is that something, and how do we how do we bridge that gap? Mm, yeah. So I think it, it's much better if. We just have uh, this employees or data engineers that is working from remote job, just like the job that we aspire to do. I think they can be much more informative. And from experience, that I, I know that we can learn something. Last time, Nahom and Nabil came, and they told us many more, many more, much more things and useful stuff. We learned things. I mean, tangible, applicable things. And um, I think if we had another session like that, specifically for the tracks and for the demands. The work of, of the of what the job uh, the recruiters job recruiters actually want and anything that would be much more helpful I guess mm. one session that's what I thought okay yeah I mean I I'm not I'm not pushing back on you on this I'm not I'm actually trying to understand we can we can get our alumni to come in um, so I see Jakinda's question uh, as well. I mean, so we are, one point that I also want to make is they are, it's, these are almost approximations, right? So there is no one ML engineering job that everyone in the world tracks to, and there's no one data engineering job that everyone in the world tracks to. And you might even have the same, within the same company, if you're there for a couple of years, you might be, it may be called the same thing, and your actual responsibilities may change. Um, 
Jakinda, yes, of course, you, one can change. This is where our goal is to get your first job. Um, and you can, you'll have to make your own career path after that. But there's a, <clears throat> what I'm hearing is that we've, this artificial environment, this artificial training environment that we have, it's the gap between what we have now and what the real world will look like feels, feels very real and perhaps I don't know if the right word is scary or people don't feel necessarily prepared for that. And so I'm trying to think through, I'm trying to think through what we can do there. Um, Della? Stella? Stashi? Uh, okay. Uh, I still I don't know what, what, what your real name is or what you prefer to be called. <laughs> But I thought it was Stella. Either, either is okay. But officially it's Stella. And I just wanted to to talk about how I came to a conclusion on what I want to do. Uh, I, I also chose MLOps at first, and then I had a chat with Arun and uh, got a feel of what the market wants. And then I went and looked at the skills I have. And, uh, and then I asked myself if uh, I want to do what I already know, I want to do something new. And then I asked if uh, if I want to do something new, if I am able to learn those skills on my own. So I went and, uh, and looked at the two and I realized uh, there are skills I have, but uh, when I look at that engineering, it's new for me. And when I look at the material there, when I read it, I can learn it. So I wanted to do something other than what I know. And that's how I came to the data engineering uh, route for me. Okay. At, in terms of confidence for an interview day one of the job, how are you feeling, Stella? Uh, I'm having the normal uh, jitters. I'm worried about who I'll meet and uh, all that. I'm also worried if I'll be able to actually do it. But uh, I'm feeling like it's a natural, a natural feeling of just being jittery, yeah. Okay. Zalalem? Okay, uh, I just want to ask about the, the tracks. Uh, on the email engineering, it's more, you say it's more about uh, operational and managing. So what we, most of the time, the email jobs that we have done here is we create the models from scratch we pre-process our data and apply it to them. So when uh, it becomes operational, probably we are going to manage uh, models that are already done. So uh, it's not uh, much clear, you know, is it about like when there is new data, ret retraining on the new data, or is it about checking or validating on new test sites or something? So I think, Will it be more of an MLOps or something? Because so, we are not great. Thing. So here, here's my feeling. I mean, and so I, we're still, we are also learning as we go, and every company is also different. But let's take the example of Brenda, who spoke to us from Wayfair. Brenda works in fraud detection. So let's assume that Brenda, Brenda and her team have designed and are happy with. Um, uh, Brenda and her team are happy with their fraud detection algorithm, and Brenda is currently maintaining that. Now, Brenda decides, goes to her manager and says, I want to hire somebody because this model is working, but I don't want to have to maintain this model. So can I hire a junior person to maintain this model, reports to me, and I, I'm still responsible, Brenda is still responsible for the output of that model, but the day-to-day -day working of that model, making sure that it's running, if the data needs to be updated, making sure all the pipelines are running, um, how are you keeping it updated? If the data is new data, it needs to be changed, there's some new behavior that it has to be updated, then that would fall to this junior person who is not responsible for the scientific design of the new model, but maintaining the model. That's, that's one scenario that I can imagine. Um, Yababel went through a very similar process, he told me once, where he designed a model and then he transitioned that over to a more junior person so that he didn't have to do the day-to-day -day, uh, work.
Does that, I don't know if that answers your question, Zola. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's, that's just one example, but the point here is that the, the responsibility, you will, none of you will be placed, or it's very, very, very rare that you, any of you would be placed into a job and the management team says, go build a new model for this mission critical thing. Most of you will be joining teams where a manager has, is invested in you performing well because when you do your job well, then that's good for his or her team. And so they'll tell you specifically what it is that they want you to do. And you'll probably be working uh, under that person's direct responsibility with their guidance and oversight. I can't think of a single person that we've placed ever who didn't have a manager who was invested in that person's success. So it's, it's almost, and this is why I made the point right at the start, um, it's, not a, it's not a combative process. This competition is gone. You, we all, you're, you will be hired by somebody who wants you to succeed because if I'm managing a team of five people, the success of those five people, if they're under my responsibility, actually makes me look good. So it's not a competitive process. Maybe this is part of the smell that's missing. But yeah, there's something that we haven't uh, this that we haven't successfully bridged this gap of what the real world looks like. I think this competitiveness is something that um, we've gotten it wrong. The world the the world of work is less competitive than I think most of you um, most of you realize. People show up, they do their job. Of course, there's a little bit of you know people want to be known as good at A, B, or C, but actually everyone wants their own to be successful. And I think weeks nine and 10, we did quite well on that, where at least from what I could see, it was much more cooperative than some of the previous weeks. And I think that was a good example. So data engineering, yeah, we'll look for a data engineering guest. Um, we haven't, I have to look for that person, so I'll, I'll put that on my list of uh, things to do. Okay, so let us uh, let us wrap up. I would actually love uh, for the, over the next three days. So, summary: over the next three days, uh, it's very important for you to first think about the type of job that you want, and by today, each and every person should have a profile which um, is ready enough to share. So, first think and then start implementing that, and go thoroughly through your profile and make it match to what um, the type of job that you want. From a confidence perspective, we will work with you and we will build on that. And um, were you there, Mokali? Actually, there was a, we had a guest talk for, um, for some of the women applicants. And Mokali, who uh, she's one of our Kenyan trainees, she had recommended to some of the women trainees to adopt this mentality of fake it until you make it. So even if you don't feel 100% confident, don't hesitate um, to tell yourself or force yourself to feel confident. Yeah, so we are going to come back and meet again in uh, not very much time for the T-shaped learner uh, discussion. So I hope each of you guys has uh, read through that. And I think that's also contributing to this. So goal for the end of Friday is you should have a very clear view of the type of role that you want. You should have a sense or a smell of what employers are looking for, and your profile materials need to be error-free. And I would like the next three days to be uh, super interactive. Yeah? All right, I'm gonna stop recording.